Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at other information and supplementary information. So we need to know what these are and what is the auditor's responsibilities. Now we already looked at other information and just as a short recap, other information is voluntary information and not audited. And there's a one whole recording about other information. Then we talked about supplementary information. Supplementary information, also voluntary information, but it could be audited if engaged, if the auditor engaged to do so. We already covered those two. Make sure you are familiar with them. Now we're going to be discussing required supplementary information or RSI. Well, by the word required, it means it's not voluntary. It's required. Although it's required, the first thing I want to tell you, and I will emphasize this later on in the lecture, because on many CPA questions, what they do is as soon as they say it's required, you think it's audited. Well, it is required, but the information is not audited. We don't issue an opinion about this information. So notice the required, the required supplementary information, it's in addition. It's supplementary information. So what is RSI? Because this is the focus of this chat of this recording. Well, it's any information that's de designated by an accounting standard setter, which is what does that mean? Just by FASB or GASB, just kind of make it easy. FASB or GASB thinks that this information must accompany, required to, to a company, not audit, must require the basic financial statement. So it's not part of the, of the financial statements. Just think of Farhat Lectures. Farhat Lectures is a supplemental resource to your CPA preparation, right? So think of it as in addition to your course, not part of the basic financial statement. And that designated accounting standard has determined that the information is basically essential. It's required, it's essential, but it doesn't have to be audited. So what are we talking about here? What, what What is this information? Give me an example about RSI. Well, an example of an RSI will be the management discussion and analysis for governmental reporting. So if you are preparing the financial statement for a governmental entity, well, you have to prepare. It's required MDNA for governmental governmental reporting. Another example will be estimate of current or future our future cost of future major repair or replacement for common interest realty association. So certain uh, association, building, condos, what they do, they have to disclose what is the future cost for repair and, and replacement for their investors. So it's a required supplemental information, certain pension information. It's required if you have a certain pension plan, you have to disclose certain information. So this is what RSI is. So the question is, what is the auditor's responsibility? So now, what is the auditor association? Now we know what RSI is. What is the auditor's association? Well, before we discuss the auditor association, most likely you're a CPA candidate. If you're listening to this, that's great. I can help you supplement, now supplemental information, help you supplement your CPA education. My resources are aligned with your Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, so it's very easy, Miles. So it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. I explain the material differently. I can help you do better. This is the reason you are here is because you are looking for help. I can help you. Lectures, multiple choice, true, false. And I also provide you with 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions with detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording. The mere fact that you're watching it, it means it's helping you. Share it with others. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit. And if you're a CPA candidate, join my group me account, CPA exam support group. So the auditor responsibility is basically the following. First, they will need to inquire uh, inquiry of management. What's inquiry? Just inquire, ask management about certain things. What are those certain things? What methods, guidelines they use to create this MDNA report? Any significant assumption or interpretation? Did you make any assumptions or interpretation? Because in the MDNA, you can say anything you want to. Well, if you are, what assumptions, what interpretation did you make? Any method used, and if you change those methods and the reason for the change, for example, if you use a different method last year, you're using, are you using a different method this year from last year? Well, I need to know why and if, if that method has changed. Also, what the auditor will have to do in addition to inquiring, well, that's good. They told us what we need to hear. Now, compare the information for consistency. That, does this information consist with the basic financial statements? Well, if they're telling an MDNA, uh, our growth is 15%, well, this, is this consistent? You know, our revenue growth is 15%. Is this consistent with the financial statement? Do we have a 15% growth? We have to compare 
the information to what they actually tell us. Maybe we'll talk to three different people in the company. Is management response to the inquiries consistent? Is one person telling us something else than another person about the same issue? Well, we need to be aware of this. Any audit evidence that support or does not support what they're saying, this is basically our job is to inquire. And definitely we need to obtain a written representation from management that it's their responsibility. Now, what is the auditor's responsibility after they do all of this? If it's a private company, what they will do, they will issue a report. Let's take a look at a report, a summary report for private companies that will generate, that will not generate, basically summarizes everything that we learned thus far about RSI. Basically, it summarizes everything you need to know for RSI. So let's go over this. The accounting principle generally accepted, which is GAAP, require the supplementary information on page XX to be presented to supplement the basic financial statement. Remember what we talked about? There is an accounting standard body. Here we are talking about GAAP. Well, remember we said it's not part of the financial statement. It's the supplement financial statement. Although the infor all such information, although not part of the financial statements, is required. So notice is required. It's essential, required. Who consider it to be essential part of the financial reporting for placing the financial statement in an appropriate operational economic or his or historical context so it's given us more information but that's all that's all what it is that's the requirement of it we have applied limited procedures to the required supplementary information and according with the auditing generally uh, standard generally accepted in the u.s basically procedures but those procedures are limited what are they they consist of inquiries of management about the methods of preparing the information comparing the information for consistency with management responses to our inquiry the basic financial statements and other knowledge we obtain during the audit this is what i said on the prior on the prior on the prior slide just inquiries comparing what they're telling us if it makes sense if it jive with the financial statements if it jives with other information we are giving in the audit also we do not express an opinion no opinion is ex expressed so notice information is required no opinion is expressed we do not provide any opinion okay we do not provide us with sufficient evidence to express an opinion or provide any assurance what happens if the information is omitted? Generally speaking, if the information is omitted, you need to know it does not impact the financial, the opinion on the financial statements. Although it's omitted, it's essential, but it's not going to impact your opinion of the financial statement. Now let's take a look at a sample report. Management has omitted the management discussion and analysis that accounting principle generally accepted in the United States required to be presented to supplement the basic financial statement. Such missing information, although not part of the financial statement, is required by GASB, which is the governmental, which consider it to be essential. So basically what they're telling us, they omitted the information. Here's the here's what we need to tell you that the information is omitted. And just so you know. Now, for PCAOB, okay, we don't add a paragraph about required supplemental information, but for PCAOB, if the information is missing, if any information, if any required supplemental information is missing, then we issue a similar report to this one. Only we issue the report if the information is missing. So simply put, the information is omitted, there's a material departure, or we could not complete the procedures that we need to do. And this is under PCAOB. At this point, we issue a similar report to this one. Once again, what should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe, work through false, multiple choice, exercises, whatever resources I can give you to help you prepare for the exam. Good luck. Study hard. The exam, the CPA exam is worth it. It will pay you dividend down the road. Don't shortchange yourself.